Hi, my name's Scott the Miniature Maniac, and welcome to the end of year crappy YouTube video that no one asked for that every YouTuber does. Basically, it's like the show equivalent of a clip show. What up, Mini Family? 2020, what can you say about it? We've experienced a global pandemic that has stressed nearly every single faculty in the world. And here in the United States, we're experiencing civil unrest due to a racial incident that occurred in my home state of Minnesota. And then there's me over here just painting figs and making vids. <laughs> it's kind of strange. Luckily for me, despite what's going on in the larger world, I'm able to still do this full time as a job. And that's entirely due to the support that you guys have shown me in a number of ways. It's been awesome. It's such a cool thing to be able to pay for my mortgage and the food that my dog eat and the food that I eat, I suppose, with a career of making videos about painting miniatures. And I wouldn't trade that for the world, no matter how many times I have to explain to my extended family how I actually make money. You put videos on the internet? Yep. And they're free to watch? Yep. Why did you quit your job as a software engineer? Jokes aside, it's an amazing job that not all people have the opportunity to do. So I am very thankful that I have the support to be able to do it. Let's talk stats. The most popular video in 2020 was saving money with kit bashing which makes me incredibly happy. This video was the culmination of something that I wanted to do, a good clickbaity title and thumbnail, and an edit that I'm super proud of. Oftentimes, as YouTubers, the videos we don't care about are the ones that perform the best, whereas the categories and subjects that we care a lot about typically languish at the bottom of our view counts. And while that still happens to everyone once in a while, the YouTube algorithm has shown me mercy in this case. Moving right along to the most popular Instagram post for 2020, it is a space marine. <laughs> <laughs> the most popular Facebook post was my mid-year retrospective on how my set has changed over these five years of making videos. Being a fan of the miniature hobby, but also the videography hobby, I'm constantly learning how to improve not only my painting, but also my video creation from set dressing to camera, audio, lighting, etc. It's always fun to do little retrospectives like that. Now, on everyone's favorite part of this video, let's read some little spicers with some help from my wife. So opinion, huh? You suck dong. There you go. <laughs> That's an opinion. Well, Wait, would it be an opinion? That sounds like a fact. What a bunch of douchebags. Not everyone went to art school and know all the regurgitated shite you spit asswipe. How about <laughs> saying in a roundabout polite way, it looks good if that's your thing, even though you may throw up a little in your mouth. Be nice. Like I said, not everyone wanted to go to or is such a fucking loser <laughs> that has all the time in the world to do nothing but learn about coloring toys and then go around licking company owner's testicles for free shite and recognition. Be humble, you fucking wanker. <laughs> I like how he's telling me to be nice while calling me a fucking wanker. I lose IQ points every time I watch. I get worse at this hobby every time I watch. If I followed your advice, I would lose. People think this is entertaining. Good for you. I like how... He says, if I follow your advice, I would lose. At, like nothing in particular, just in general, <laughs> like at life. When you said you had a wife, it gave me hope because <laughs> girls like people like you, which I thought was impossible. Is that an insult or a compliment? It sounded like a compliment at first, <laughs> but then just shelve meth next time. I'm in no way watching this for another reason other than watching you because it was recommended and it's a bit of fun to see who can deprive themselves of sleep the longest. And I'm speaking for myself. Perhaps some other people when I say midwinter minis is way, way, way more engaging and charismatic than you are despite what he told me. I can't see you as a person worthwhile being around. But congratulations, you got my fucking view. So great, that means next to nothing. And as such, I will not be watching any more of your content other than midwinter minis in future. Fuck you. <laughs> oh yeah, just a little cherry on top of the end. Fuck you. Man, that guy is so angry. Hi, you wanna be in the video? Bullet! Oh, baby goo. This is the mid-video dog break. Don't tell me how to paint my shit unless you're offering to do it for free. 
I feel like that's kind of the point of my entire channel is that I'm giving you advice on how to paint your stuff. Sorry, but you sound like a douche. Who cares what color anyone paints their miniatures? I feel like everyone cares what color they paint their miniatures, don't they? <laughs> Otherwise you just pick random ones. Maybe he's saying, who cares what other people paint their miniatures? Yeah. Mm, yeah, okay. like you shouldn't tell people what to paint their miniatures. Fair play. Don't tell him what to do. Yeah. Because he'll Unless do it. you're offering to do it for free. Could you imagine if I offered to everyone? Don't tell him what to do. No. Because <laughs> he'll do it. Turned off video after a few seconds. Very disgusting and rude in this, regards to the wet palette. Yeah, this is definitely a wet palette video. Can you show me your best wet palette no. mouth? <laughs> I watch these videos for the informative content, but I can't avoid the elephant in the room anymore. This dude is possibly the cringiest guy ever. Prime example is the wet palette video, but all his videos are super cringe. Just give us painting tips and save the comedy for people who are actually funny. <laughs> Oh my god, dude. This is like a this is like a healthy therapeutic time, you know. It shrinks the ego a solid amount. Your skin looks pretty bad. Thank you. And you have a hair just hanging down. Okay, I don't I mean these guys are doing a good enough job shrinking my ego. I didn't ask you to do it as well. Alright. Let's do some little QA sesh. How do you cope with the big flat areas of a model so that it doesn't look boring, especially at larger scales? I think the answer to this is texture. Uh, so many things in life have texture in them. I have a whole video body you can see right up there. Especially at larger scales, you can do texture a lot easier. Like battle damage, like brushed metal, like stitches, like, you know, big woven cotton. A lot of texture exists in the world, so that's how you make bigger areas more interesting. And also, when are you making another mini? Yeah, so last year I made a model, the Duchess, and this year I didn't make any, and I'm possibly bit off more than I could chew because I'm trying to make three new miniatures, three new wood elves. And here are the concept arts for them. Um, one of them is sculpted, the other two are currently work in progress. And the reason why it's taking so long is I'm kind of at the mercy of other people and their schedules and, what, uh, and how they prioritize stuff. So I hire people to do my sculpting and my casting and all of that. And oftentimes those companies have other projects that they care about more. You're not gonna find someone who casts stuff that also doesn't cast their own things to sell. And so uh, it makes sense why they would prioritize their own products. But yeah, I'm kind of just at the mercy of, of, of their schedule. So it'll get done soon, probably soon next year, and then we'll, we'll do something uh, for the release of them. But I'm super excited about these what else. I love the concepts. Also, Chris, if you're watching this video, Chris is my caster, I don't fault you at all for prioritizing your own business over mine. That is exactly what I would do. Dear Scott, if you could buy GW and redirect in an instant people's love for space marines to another model, which one would that be? I can only choose one model as a replacement from the GW universe. I had to peer deep into my soul to answer this question. I feel like I don't like things that are popular. So if I like redirected the love to something other than Space Marines, I would then hate that thing. And I'm getting better about this the older I get, but I think Space Marines are the perfect thing to hate. <laughs> so maybe I wouldn't shift it to anything else. Cause like obviously the first inclination would be like Night Haunt or like Legions in the Gash or something like that. But then again, I'm like, would I really want to spoil the thing that I love the most, like vampires and stuff like that with a bunch of other nerds love? What is the plan for next year? This is a great question. Um, I am so freaking excited for 2021. I have so many video ideas that I am so excited about. Um, I want to tell you about them. Okay, I will. <laughs> Sorry about the internal monologue of me trying to figure out whether it's a good idea to keep them a secret or to tell you about them. I'll tell you about three of them. My mom found a journal entry in her book about the first day that I started painting miniatures. It's, it's amazing. And I'm making a video where I repaint one of the old models uh, from my Lord of the Rings days. And it starts with my mom reading the passage from that diary. And the rest of it is not narrated, it's just soft music and a lot of cutaways, a lot of B-roll, um, but it's gonna be a cool thing to see the uh, beginning model and the end model. And I'm gonna try pretty much as hard as I can to paint the model as best as I can. That's gonna be sick. I'm making a video about video games 
and what they uh, have meant to me. They've allowed me to cultivate friendships across the world. Like I moved out of my state of Wisconsin to Minnesota and I left behind an amazing group of friends. And the only reason I believe that we're still friends is because one video game in particular that we've played for over a decade. And so I wanna paint a character from that video game while talking about, about that. And uh, the last one I'm really excited for is uh, Kill Your Friends is going to come out, which is a series about gaming on this channel. I'm not sure how often I'm gonna be able to do it, um, but I, I have finally finished the last things that I need to finish uh, to start editing the video, and so I'm going to. So I'm super excited about that. And there are a lot of other projects that are on my list that are like really fun ideas um, that I can't wait to do. Are you ever gonna make a video on terrain slash scratch building? One of my favorite videos in the world is your basis videos. I have made some terrain uh, videos. Uh, I made two of them and you can find them below, uh, but I freaking love making terrain, so definitely expect to make more of them. This is a really interesting question. How long do you intend to do this channel for? Obviously the immediate response is forever and what that means effectively is until I retire from doing work, but you know, YouTube isn't really a tested career. Like a lot of other uh, careers have been around for a lot longer than YouTube has. Um, so really it kind of comes down to uh, one of two things. One, I, I retire, so I get to the end of my career. Or two, YouTube is no longer the popular video platform and something else is. Um, so I'm kind of at the mercy of like where the audience is, kind of. Um, so if it shifts to a different platform, I'm gonna shift over there too. Um, but yeah, it's a really interesting question to like think about, like how am I gonna envision and think about and, and you know deal with the problems of uh, making videos 10 years from now? Um, if I thought about it from like a software engineering perspective, it'd be, it's pretty simple. Like, okay, maybe I'd be, I'd get a couple raises, I'd be a, a better engineer and I'd be doing something similar to what I'm doing now. But for YouTube, it's like, I don't know, the sky is the limit and the ground is the limit as well. So I could succeed as much as possible or also fail as much as possible. Uh, so yeah, a little bit of internal crisis going on right now. <laughs> How do you feel about the concept of putting 10,000 hours into a craft to master it? Do you feel like those hours are necessary or can curiosity in applying the lessons you learn from trial and error help you master things faster? I guess this is a question of quantity versus quality. Um, well, I feel like in those 10,000 hours of painting, you are going to be doing just that. You're gonna be applying things that you've heard about in books or online, and then trying to figure out why what you're doing isn't working and try to improve upon that. The question of 10,000 hours is pretty interesting. I don't know if I've painted miniatures for 10,000 hours, but I've definitely painted for a fair number of hours in the thousands for sure. And I still have so many things to learn and experiment on before I, you know, be considered or consider myself a master, I guess. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I feel like you could paint for a really long time, like a lot longer than 10,000 hours and still not like have a firm grasp on like everything that miniature painting has to offer. Which mini has been in your pile of shame the longest? Super interesting question. Let me go see. I don't know specifically which model it is, but it's gotta be one of the Lord of the Rings models. Probably one from a starter set. Perhaps the Two Towers one, I believe is the oldest one that I have. Um, so yeah, it's, it's gotta be something in there. Do you ever have moments where you can't find motivation to paint? What do you do instead? Yeah, all the time. Uh, sometimes I just have to paint because I need to finish a video and that can help. So having deadlines helps, whether that's painting competitions or uh, like gaming uh, events, things where you have to have painted models done. You can even do something with your buddy where it's like, hey, let's play a game of Age of Sigmar that is, I don't know, 1,000 points or 2,000 points, whatever you wanna do, uh, like two months from now. And we'll both have painted armies for this game. So even creating like artificial things where like you rope someone else into the, into the idea gives you motivation to do it, but also like it, it means there's someone that you uh, owe something to. That kind of makes it feel like there's more pressure on you to finish, which maybe isn't a good thing, but also, I mean, it helps you to get things done. Uh, alternatively, if I'm feeling kind of lazy, I'll just do a lot of basic things. I'll clean up my area, I'll organize stuff, I'll clean camera lenses, things like that. 
Thank you, Crusher. Yeah. With so many people working from home or not working due to that that shall not be named, how has your YouTube experience been? Has viewership increased noticeably? You know, as far as I can tell, my YouTube channel metrics have not changed in the slightest based on what has happened with the coronavirus. Uh, I, there's still a typical steady growth. I get very similar uh, view counts per videos. Um, so yeah, like if, if I was just looking at stats, I'd have no idea that anything changed. Has the whole social distancing aspect of this year, no cons, classes, affected your joy in the hobby in a negative way, or has it driven you to do more painting projects behind the scenes? I would say it's definitely affected my enjoyment negatively. Uh, one of the pinnacle events of the year is going to Adepticon, and that has now been canceled for two years straight in a row, which super sucks. So. It's sad that uh, those things haven't happened because it's kind of like, you know, it's it, for me, it's like the premier event of the year. So that sucks. Um, in terms of positive, it hasn't really uh, made me want to paint anymore because I've kind of just been painting at the same rate for uh, like the last couple of years due to like the demand of making videos typically. My painting situation has been similar to those who are working from home for a while now because I've been working from home essentially on YouTube and painting miniatures in general for the last, I don't know, year and a half or so. A while back, you described YouTube burnout and the things you were going to do to change in order to work through that. How has that been going for you? That's a great question. Um, so yeah, I made a change in my channel uh, to not make content weekly anymore and just make videos whenever they are ready. When I made that announcement, I still had a couple of videos that uh, I had as obligations to other people. And now that those are done, it kind of feels like 2020 is like the end of that era. And 2021 has like these huge things that I'm super excited about doing. And so that kind of feels like it's really gonna start happening then. But recently, I had had the desire just to hobby in an evening by myself. Um, and I haven't had that desire in a super long time. Like I just painted in the basement and no one was around. I was probably watching a Twitch stream or something like that. Um, and that was, that's amazing uh, for me. I've never wanted to do that uh, in a while. And then on top of that, the buddies that I had in a recent video, I did a virtual hobby hangout with them and a few other guys. And that was a ton of fun. We did that on an evening as well. And I recently kind of worked out a deal with my wife where uh, one evening a week while she's watching TV shows in the basement next to me, I can be hobbying right here. So I would say that it's positively affected me and I'm looking forward to just doing more casual painting uh, and you know painting of my armies and stuff like that. You are currently one of the top YouTubers for miniature painting. Where do you see yourself in five years and how will you create the pathway to get there? Okay, Walter, you know you're my mini painting YouTube boss. No, that's a good question. I can definitely see in the future how having a catalog of models and digital courses for those models could become an insane revenue stream that would probably propel me into the future without even needing to make videos. So I, I wanna create more uh, models uh, to increase that revenue stream, which will hopefully allow me to do other things. Um, other things like making uh, a gaming series on my channel that's more consistent, having a second host on my channel other than myself who's able to give, uh, I don't know, gaming advice or, or more painting advice or terrain advice. Um, maybe something like hosting a convention and stuff like that. Like these are all ideas that I, I can't promise to right now, but that I'd love to be able to do uh, given enough time and also enough help. A lot of these things I believe would require like the, the employment of additional people to help out with them, which obviously requires money and, and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, I would love to, basically I want the Miniac channel to be a hub for all things hobby. Like I love, I love everything in this hobby. And I know that my channel is mostly focused on, on like painting content right now, but like, I don't know the lore of it, the, uh, the games, um, like the events, like everything. Like I really do love it all and it'd be cool if the channel reflected that. How often do you use nice brushes versus crappy cheap brushes? And how do you make sure to keep those nice brushes nice? Um, I, you know, I typically use nice brushes, I don't know, probably like 85% of the time and crappy ones at different times. 
Um, I have a video all about how to clean and maintain your nice brushes. And I see here that you are harsh on your brushes. If you know what being harsh on your brushes looks like, just don't do that to your nice ones. I think probably the biggest struggle is that when you aren't aware that your habits are damaging your brush, but if you if you are aware of habits that damage brushes, just don't do them. <laughs> I, I will say I could probably use bad brushes more often. I just tend to default to grabbing the nice ones. Um, synthetic ones um, are pretty nice and have a nice point on them and that could probably last for a while when painting some of the larger areas on miniatures and doing things like base coating. Is there a particular sci-fi or fantasy movie or franchise that doesn't have minis that you would really like to see miniatures for? Um, I would love to see uh, Michael Morbius model from uh, the Marvel comic book series. He's kind of like an anti-hero in the Spider-Man universe. Um, I would love to see Underworld's models, specifically uh, the ones from Rise of the Lycans, the third Underworld's movie. Surprise, surprise, these are both vampires. Up until recently, there were no models that I was super excited about for Arthurian lore. Um, so I would have said that one. When you first started painting, what was the first technique you had difficulty learning? Highlighting, wet blending, etc. It's kind of a hard question to answer because when I started painting, like I didn't really care about like time. Like when I was 12, I didn't care if I was doing something and it took a while. Um, also like my, my gauge for what is bad and what is not bad was totally different than what it is now. And so I've only kind of been, become cognizant of like my painting approach like much later in life. Some things that are hard now, um, loaded brush blending, like the the method that Ben Comets uses a lot. I've tried it a couple times, probably like four or five times, and I just, I can't get it right. I bet if I just kept trying it a couple times, I'd, I'd figured it out, but that one is kind of being elusive for me. Do you play D&D? &D? And if so, what edition? And what edition is your favorite? Also, if you play D&D, &D, what's your favorite class? Finally, do you paint things that would be D&D &D related? So technically I do play D&D, &D. I play fifth edition, but we don't play that often. Um, we kind of just hang out maybe like, I don't know, twice a year <laughs> and play. And I play a wood elf monk, which was the closest thing to a war dancer that I could pick. And um, I use uh, a GW figure for my character. Um, but I have painted a dwarf and also an elf, uh, one from Dark Sword Miniatures, and another one that was 3D printed for two other characters in my group. So yeah, I do paint things for D&D every now and then. All right, that's it for the questions. Thank you guys for submitting them. I really appreciate them. If I didn't answer them in this video, I'll have a text response wherever you posted it. Um, so look out for that if you wanted an answer to your question. Uh, I'm really, really grateful for the support you guys have shown me um, over this past year. Um, this past year was a big year for me because uh, it was the year my wife quit her job to start helping me. So not only are you supporting me, but you're also supporting her and also our dogs, like 100%. Um, so yeah, it was a big year for me, um, despite all the negative things going on in the world around us. I'm looking forward to a lot of things in 2021. Like I said, the videos, the what else that I wanna make, um, hopefully I'm able to also do another community event. I was a huge fan of the uh, charity thing we did, um, but also I'd like to do um, a painting competition again. That was a lot of fun. My goal is to do at least one big community event a year if possible. Um, so yeah, I definitely wanna do something more like that as well. Also to get some announcements out of the way, there are a couple things I wanna say. In regards to the live stream, it's been flip-flopping back and forth between Twitch and YouTube as a way for me to gauge which platform that I really want to spend my time on on my Friday evenings of streaming. And I've decided that Twitch is gonna be that final resting spot. So head over to Twitch, uh, like the channel so you get notifications when I go live and we'll hang out on Fridays painting minis. Um, another one is that in January, I'm gonna be straight chilling. Uh, last year I took January off from making videos. I'm gonna do the same thing this year and just hang out, uh, paint some minis, maybe work on some things that are not video related like uh, live stream stuff or things for upcoming products that I wanna make and other things like that. I can't say it enough. So again, thank you guys for this year of support and all the years of support you've given me. This will be the fifth year going into the sixth year of making videos on this channel and it's amazing. It's, uh, it's, it's super awesome. I'm super grateful to have this opportunity. 
So thank you. Um, more importantly than that mumbo jumbo though, subscribe or die. And most importantly, don't forget to. A lot of people are surprised that I don't do the scream at the end of every single video. It's the same recording over and over and over again. Speaking of, here are some fantastic YouTube submissions from other people doing the outro in their special ways. It's awesome. Pay my melees! Pay my melees! Just for melees!